Good evening and welcome to St. Paul's as we begin the celebration of the great three days, the triduum of Easter with this Monday Thursday liturgy. The order of service for this evening is available in the sermon section of our website. Although as you see, you'll see as we go along that there's been one adjustment. Our opening hymn is Jesus Feed Us. This is the day that Christ the Lamb of God gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. This is the day that Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the day that Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done for us. This is the day that Christ our God gave us this holy feast, that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection and to the last day reign with him in heaven. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray together the collect for today. 
O oh God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has left to us this meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and his blood. May we who celebrate this sign of the great love, of his great love, show in our lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. How shall I repay the Lord? For all the good things he has done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O let us pray. Eternal God, faithful in your tender compassion, you give us hope for our life here and hereafter through the victory of your only Son. When we share his cup of salvation, receive in us the joy of this everlasting gift. We ask this in his name. Amen. A reading from the first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup up after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is, This is My Body. And the life that I give 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are the messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone you will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of Christ. One of the usual features of the Monday Thursday liturgy is the washing of feet. This year, of course, we are not able to gather together in person and do things exactly the way we are accustomed to. So instead of a traditional homily, I invite you to join me, join with me in a meditation a meditation on feet. Feet, of course, are essential to most of us. They are what make us mobile. They carry us places. They enable us to get about our business and to carry out our necessary tasks. They allow us to run and play with our children. They carry us on leisurely strolls through the park. They enable us to walk the dog. According to our Sustina neighbors, the feet also hear and see. The feet communicate. They touch the earth and listen to and commune with.
creation. I invite you to close your eyes for a moment and to picture your own feet in your mind's eye. Reflect on their shape, their texture, their color. Perhaps your feet are rough and worn. Or perhaps they're soft and smooth. Do you see any scars, corns, or bunions? How do your feet feel right now? Are they sore and tired, rested and vigorous? Picture your feet in your mind's eye. Reflect upon all the places those feet have carried you, the paths they have trod, both smooth and rough. The journeys they have been on, pleasant and arduous. The turns that they have made, right and wrong, wise and foolish. Now picture in your mind's eye Jesus gathered with his disciples, gathered in a back room, preparing to sit down and eat together. Imagine his friend's shock when their master, their teacher, rises from the table, takes off his outer robe, ties a towel around himself, pours water into a basin, and begins to wash their feet one by one. To wash their feet feet dirty from a long day's journey. Fishermen's feet, feet worn by life. Hear Peter's protest, Lord, you will not wash my feet. And hear Jesus' command, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. And as you picture the scene in your mind's eye, ask yourself, why? Why did Jesus insist upon washing his friend's feet? And why now? Why now on the evening before he was to be sent to the cross?
Why would Jesus insist on doing the simple act, an act normally performed by a slave or a servant? Why? Why was it so important to him that he wash his friend's feet? And why did he command his disciples to follow his example and do the same for others? Now picture in your mind's eye all the feet that you have washed in your life. The feet of your children or grandchildren. Think of the feet you have massaged after a hard and difficult work day. Think of the feet you have affectionately caressed, playfully tickled. Think of the wounded feet you have bandaged. And as you draw these scenes to your mind's eye, recall how you felt at these moments, these precious moments. Now picture in your heart's eye, Jesus. Jesus kneeling before you and washing your feet. What do you do? Do you protest like Peter? Or do you willingly present your feet to Jesus to be washed. Picture your feet as Jesus gently washes and dries them. What do you feel as Jesus washes your feet? Do you feel ashamed, embarrassed, shy? Uncomfortable? Or do you feel cleansed, healed, at peace, joy, gratitude? Picture Jesus as he washes and dries your feet.
Jesus commanded his disciples to wash the feet of others, just as he had washed their feet. Whose feet are you prepared to wash? Now picture only your feet. Where will they carry you this night and in the days to come as we take up the cross with Jesus, as we stand by while he is crucified, as we take down his broken body and carry it to the tomb? and as we wait before returning to the tomb on Easter Sunday morning. Amen. Let us pray together the litany for Monday Thursday. Prayers of the people, on this holy night we join together spiritually as the body of Christ and at the table commit ourselves to love and serve one another. On this holy night, and let us pray for the church and all you in Christ. God our provider, you feed us with the bread of life and lift for us the cup of salvation. On this night, Jesus gave us his holy feast. May all who gather at your table receive a foretaste of the eternal banquet. God of love, hear our prayer. Servant God, on this night, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. May we follow this example of love and service. God of love, hear our prayer. God of compassion, on this night, Jesus prayed for those who would believe through the message of the disciples. May those who gathered on this day to renew their ordination vows so live with what they proclaim that all may come to know your saving love. God of love, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of renewal, on this day throughout the world, oil is consecrated for the use in baptism and healing. We pray for all those who will be anointed with, those, with these old holy oils, for the sick and those who are preparing for baptism. God of love, grant our prayer. God our companion, we pray for those unable to share table fellowship due to COVID-19, infirmity, bigotry, and or oppression. May we always act in ways that include, affirm, and embrace all your children. God of love, hear our prayer. God of hope, remember all those in need, especially those we silently hold before you now. God of love, hear our prayer. Holy God, you gave us this meal of bread and wine in which we celebrate your great compassion. Grant that we may work with you to fulfill our prayers and to love and to serve others as Christ has loved us. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who is alive with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Wherever you may be, let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. Our offertory hymn is, Sister, Let Me Be Your Servant. Uh, during the offertory, you will, there will be slides on your screens showing how you can continue to support St. Paul's financially. We'll be using Eucharistic Prayer 6. Uh, Eucharistic Prayer 6 is not the same as the one you'll see on your screen, uh, but the responses are the same as the familiar ones. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. 
Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into your care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us the hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our, our savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, you sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, this very night, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This very night after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given them thanks, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Father, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit, may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace.
Remember Fergus, Cyril, Bob, and myself, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with Paul, and with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. In solidarity with all those around the world, this most holy night, who because of COVID are not able to be present in person to receive this most holy sacrament, let us pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer after communion. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment, to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment in our hearts. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all who gave his life and died for us, yet is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It is customary on Monday, Thursday, after the Eucharist has been celebrated, 
to strip the altar and the church of all its decoration in preparation for the solemnity of tomorrow when we remember Christ's crucifixion. As the altar is being stripped, we will sing, Worthy is the Lamb, followed by Psalm 22, verses 1 through 18, which will be said in unison. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you, and were delivered. They trusted in you, and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm, and no man, scorned by all, and despised by the people. 
All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help me. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a pot sherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. <laughs> 